What's happening? This is John Sue, just slabber. This is episode 30. Very, very special, special guest today. It's an absolute fucking honor. Man? This is Ireland's greatest ever boxer. Well, in my opinion, anyway. Thanks very much. It says in the bottom of the bo- the back of the book here, arguably the greatest Irish boxer of all time. Well, I would say 100%. Well, Luke, it's nice to be in the argument. I'll, I'll, I'm happy enough for that. There is no argument, bro. It's, it's you and Barry <laughs> McGuigan. I'm not sure which one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, absolute fucking honour to have you. This is Carl Frampton, two-weight world champion. Legend. So, let's get into it, my bro. Fucking... I remember you from way back. I'm talking way back. I've even got a, a tweet on my phone yeah. that you done. You sent to Zelia Banks. Do right. you remember? I remember she was she was slobbering. Um, she was about. I can't remember. She was just slobbering about the, everybody in the in the whole country. I think everyone was a dickhead or something. Or yes. What, and then. I can't even remember what I said back, but I know I mentioned I've her. I've got it here. I'm going to put it up on the screen for everyone to read. But I, um, I, I seen it last night. Like this is what you said, right? Yo, 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 hold up. You, <laughs> 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 you obviously haven't heard John Sue. Belfast is the rap capital of the UK and the world. Because she said the UK really can't rap. Uh, UK rap is a disgrace. Listen. That was in two thousand. When was that? Two thousand and fourteen. Hi. Yeah, I just I just heard about you, and I was like, "There's not." I mean, you're the you were the only rapper from yeah. Belfast at the time, like yeah. so. I just I just done that there, right? Um, Yo, I I can remember. I remember clearly. I woke up, woke up. I just released the album or something. Woke up, came down, and I don't even, I'd never used Twitter. I've never fucking used it, but I went on Twitter. I just seen you. Rem- uh, Carl Frampton, yeah, MBE tagged you, and I thought, nah, this is a joke. I thought it's one of your like a fake page. <laughs> Clicked on it, it was your page. He's there, called me the best rapper in the world. I was hype, <laughs> and ran the medallion, I was, da, da. So, I'm telling you, bro, I love that. When I posted that up, then this is a funny thing. I, I lived, I grew up in Manchester, yeah. as you know, went to school, Moss Side, and I was like the only Irish guy in the school. And then in year eight, they said, oh, there's a new kid coming in. He was a wee ginger boy. And he yeah. came walking in. I says, where are you from? And he goes, Ashanka. I was like, what? Then he's called Kenny Caldwell. Aye, wee hot dog. And, oh, so that's who you even mention him in your aye, book? Aye, hot dog's in the book. That's Kenny, aye. Um, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, a small world, isn't it? Kenny, Kenny, um, I ended up meeting him when I was training in Manchester. We stayed in Bolton. That's where yeah. we used to kind of sleep and stuff. And, um, a wee flat was anyway, and, and I met him. I met him. I hadn't seen him in years, and we went out and had a Nando's and stuff together. And Kenny was a good lad, eh? bro. I couldn't believe it. So it's that funny when Kenny came to my school. He came into my class then, yeah. and um, I was shocked to hear the you know the Belfast accent. Yeah. And I was like, "Wow, no way! No, I'm from Rath So me and him became mates. Yeah. And then um, I told him about my dad, and then his dad was freaked out. He was like, "I got out there away, away from, from Bel- I came away from Belfast, and then he, there you are in Manchester, yeah. you know." But he became my best mate. We went round, um, took him camping and everything. Me and Kenny, like, you right, Kenny's. I haven't seen him in a while now. Maybe about four years. The last I've not seen him that time in Bolton, but um, no, Kenny was all right. Yeah. I played for his football team. No, his dad was his dad involved in coaching the team or not? I think his dad might have been involved in coaching the team, but. Play for a wee team, Bally Sillon called Glenfield. Yes. For a while. And um, yeah, that's when we started the Grammy yeah. show. Well, he was about 12 or something when he moved to Manchester. Uh, and then that was it. And, then, and it's funny because then when I posted up that, then years later, you know, saying fucking Frampton supporting me, yeah. he messaged me and says, hey, Carl was my best mate growing uh, up. Aye, we were good mates. But I didn't know, I didn't even know if I could, if I believed it because you know what, everyone's No, like, we were. Everyone's, everyone's he lived, he lived down the bay. I lived in the, we well, didn't really live in the bay. There's a bit of a divide. People call, there's Tigers Bay, right? Yeah. A few streets. Then there's a wee bit across North Queen Street and there's Midland. He lived in Midland. But they all try and say they're in yeah, the bay, but yeah. they're not. They're not of course, in the bay. Of course, obviously. Aye. Of course. I read in your book, you said there's no real borders of Tigers Bay. You don't really know nah. like where it begins and where it ends. Uh, I, well, uh, apparently it's only, it's officially I think it's only like the top few streets. Flip, hit that mic. It's only like, 
Holidays Row, Mackey Street, a couple of streets around the very, very top, I think, is meant to be officially Tigers Bay, but it's it's a bit bigger now. People in Mount Coyle are claiming they're from Tigers yeah. Bay and they're not. People from Midland are yeah. not, so... Of course. Right. <laughs> it's just a big, long... It's like a steep hill, isn't it? The bay, no. Well, that's... Um, it goes up a hill. It's not that steep. Maybe, st- maybe uh, steep. Uh, <laughs> 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 you used to run up it every day. Uh, it's, um, it looks steep to me. Uh, it? It's uh, it's only a small, small place. And then I done a wee um, workshop in like the... It was like a youth club and all, wasn't oh, yeah. So I'd done the workshop there as well. And I was driving past it yesterday. I looked in and seen it. We had a wrapper over from See, London. It depends what you... So there's a youth club in Mount Collier, which yeah. is where all the kids from the Bay would go. And there's an R1 in, right in the middle of the Bay in the community centre as well. Yes, I think this one was like... Um, Say the school? Yes. Oh, I curry Brentwell, so that's Mount Collier. Yes, oh, that yeah. was the one. That was where it was. That was fun. I, I done loads of them. Like, like I said, I done loads of youth clubs, but I love the Bay. My dad used to hang about the Bay. Yeah. Like all the time growing up, you know. It's funny as well, reading your book. I was annoyed. I bought your book last week. I thought I'm going to have the whole thing read yeah. for the podcast so I can go in, but... Fucking got halfway through, bro. Fuming, where did I go? Not even halfway. Not because it was shit. Bro, I'm fucking <laughs> loving it. I'm on page 120. I'm yeah. on top of the world. But I'm absolutely loving it. It's weird. I used to be an avid reader. Used to read all the time. Stop reading, bro. I thought I'm going to read your book again. Yeah. First few times, Caitlin, I'll tell you. First few times, I re- like, because you're reading. Right. You know, it's different reading the page than the screen. Kept on falling asleep. Aye. You know, like I'd read it and then just set the book down, fall asleep. Kept, I was trying my hardest to, like, you know. No, what you should do. You should have a puff after you read it. Exactly. I think so. <laughs> uh, no, but I know that's it. No, because I, I just read until I fall asleep. Yeah. It is a great way to fall asleep, like just reading constantly. But, um,. I loved it, bro. I actually loved it. I loved how it was written as well. Who did you? It's a guy called Paul Gibson ghostwrote it for me. So, um, Paul's from Belfast. Um, he's done he's done Eamon McGee's book. I don't know if well, if you're interested in reading and interested in boxing books, it's an unbelievable story. Wow. Um, it won a William Hill Sports Book of the Year, but his whole life is just mental. Yeah. So he was, fought Hatton, didn't he? He fought Ricky Hatton. Yeah, dropped Hatton yeah, as well. Second round, Hatton got back up and beat him on points, but. Um, that but was he, a sick fight, I remember. No, I, that was a good fight, a good fight. But um, he uh, he done his book, and and I think it's when people are talking to me about the book, they're saying when they're reading it, it sounds like it's me when they're reading. You know, it's my voice, like it's written in my voice, which I think was important. So yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Oh, so you done the audio of it? No, well, no, we done. Um, I've done a wee bit of the audio book. They didn't yeah. let me do the whole thing. Oh. Apparently, it takes too long, and, and yeah, so I was they've, they've say. got an actor in to do it. But I haven't. Even, I don't even know if that's been released yet. What do you mean, uh, an actor? Someone pretending to be you? No, just like someone else who reads. They don't pretend to be me, but it'll be someone with a bit from Belfast yeah. with a Belfast accent I'm with you. doing it. So, um, but when you read the page, like a, you, when you're reading the book, yeah. it sounds like it's yes, me it talking does, to you. It so does. I, I could hear your voice when I was yeah, reading yeah. it. Like, of course. Um, that's what I don't understand. Though. Why is it called my autobiography? Because me and my dad, I said, I said it should be called a biography. Uh, and because it's because it's still written as if it's you. I but and he he um, Paul, I mean Paul sends it all back to me. So it was all everything yeah. had to be passed by me yeah. to make sure it was going in of and course. stuff. So. Uh, it's, it's very well written. It definitely is. Like I said, I haven't read, haven't read any books in a long time, which is actually a shame on me. Like I used to read a lot, but um, it made me realise, fuck, I haven't read in a long time. Yeah. I thought I was going to breeze through that in yeah. the week, but obviously I had a lot on, you know. Yeah. But I loved it, bro. I loved. Um, you say um, when you were a kid, you went out and you found a balaclava, a pair of gloves, and. I was on, it, was a, it was across the street. I under it used to be a bit. Of, it's not waste ground anymore, but across the street from my house, it was a bit of waste ground, and they were all they were just packed in under this big, big boulder, big stones, and um, I seen them. I didn't do anything with them. I just found them, and I went and ran over to the house, told my dad. My dad just says, "Just stay away from it." Yeah. That was it. And then you said years later, you found out it was actually. Well, we, we think possibly he lived next door to us. Mark Haddock lived next door to us for a yeah. while, so he was a Mount Vernon UVF commander, yeah. but living in Tigers Bay at the time. And then there was a feud and stuff, and he had to get out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's actually a relation to my family. Is he? I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't a... admit that. Oh, listen, <laughs> you don't want to know some of the other relations to my family. Listen, you can't control who your family yeah. is. I, I mean not blood related he was related to my big sister you yeah. know through his um but it's small world it small is a small world, yeah. world indeed you know and like you say everyone 
know someone or know no, someone. Well, you know no, what I, mean? no, no, I, I really loved your. Um, I loved like the way you were explaining, even about you know growing up abroad. Mm. You know, and like reading about going to the twelfth and all. Yeah. How even as a child you romanticized it. Yeah. And then like when you went back, you didn't feel it. Was no, the same. I, yeah, no, I hadn't been in years, and um, I, you know, it was a it was a highlight of the year for me. You know, people talk about this in the book as well, like. You know, kids typically get really excited about Christmas, and I obviously get really excited about Christmas. But the twelfth was the big day of the year for me, and yeah. um, loved going to the bands, loved the field, and all that. And hadn't been in years, and then I brought the kids back one year. Um, it was just wasn't how I remember it. It was literally a field, and there was like someone preaching in the corner, and then everyone else walking about blocked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's madness. Um, I mean, <laughs> so like so I. I, I have early memories of building the bony and all yeah. when I was six or seven and then I remember a wee kid got burnt in mm. it. They burnt it down, he was inside Jesus. it and it was terrible. So we didn't we didn't go then. And then when we moved away, that was the end of my twelfth. Mm. Living in England then, the only bonfires they have is the fifth yeah. of November, you know, for Guy Fox. But then um, when I came back over here, I went to Larn. Did you ever see Lawrence? Lawrence, big. Oh, they the big one, don't they? Oh, the big, the Jan, world record, no? Oh, yeah. Craigie Hill, fuck man, I've never seen anything it's, like it's it. It's mantle, like, I mean, they get, you should just build them. Tigers Bay used to always have a big one, and then it's, for the last sort of 10 years, it's been small, but they used to always, and they used to have competitions, who's the biggest, and they had a bit of rivalries, and Tigers Bay always had a big one, Glasgow Street had a big one, New Mosley, Raf Cool, but, and they all tried to compete with each other, but this yeah. this Craigie Hill one, it's, it's nah, it have cranes level. and all yeah, building yeah. it like. Now nah, well, I went up. I just went to see it. I didn't see it being burnt, but uh, I remember last year I watched it burnt, and it was a wee bit like I didn't watch it live. I seen it on the thing, but I remember thinking, "Fuck!" After all that, and they literally like set one side of it on fire. Yeah. So one side's all like normal, and then the other side's on fire, and then yeah. it all just collapsed. You yeah. know, but madness, bro! It is nuts. Like I mean. The, the size of them fucking... No, they're big. Insane. They're big. And then you used to... Um, I read in the book as well. You said you used to bring the wee pallets. You used to No, bring... I used to... Everyone, all the kids in the bay would yeah. have done it. Like, we went down to Dunkrew, um, which is just down the road from us. We have a few trolleys we'd stole out of Tesco's or somewhere and yeah. and and filled it with... And, I know you're not allowed to burn tires anymore, but if we got tires, we're putting tires in it. Yeah. <clears throat> pallets as well, obviously, and, and brought them back, and you felt like you'd done your wee bit, you of know course, what I mean? Of course. Nah, it's nuts, bro. It is weird, because like I said, it's a bit, it was like, I remember early memories of it, and then, you know, yeah. that was it, and then coming yeah. back, it was all a bit alien to me, you know? I, I, I haven't been to a bonfire in, in years, years and years and years, but when I was a kid, like, I, I enjoyed it. The 11th night was always a good night, and that's when you, even when you're, when you're not meant to be drinking, that's probably the first time you had a drink. Yeah. The majority of prods anyway, yeah. when they're about 13, 14, oh everybody's, my. everybody's drinking on the 11th. Oh so my, I know that. you were, you were able to get away with it. Of course. A couple of hooch or something like that. Serious. I'm telling you, bro. Nuts. So, um, I loved, I loved reading the book, bro, especially the early years. And you're, you're just talking about how you just, you were, you were in between football and boxing. Yeah. But then you decided then to take on the boxing. Yeah, I love football. I probably liked football more than boxing, if I'm being honest. Um, but I wasn't as good. And you supported Crusaders. The Crews, oh, there's my, there's my main team. Crews Rangers and, and Liverpool when I was a kid too. And Liverpool? my wee, my wee boy, I was at the Liverpool game there at the weekend. He's a fanatic, so he's got my love back a wee bit for Liverpool. Oh, I oh just... I, no, I know you were in Liverpool actually in the weekend. Someone said to me, they uh, seen Frampton on the boat. Aye. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I, 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 no, I got the boat over. Work, mate, yeah. Seen you. Oh, it was good. So um, you went over to see. Nobody ever pretty much went three 0 He he's buzzing, but he was saying three one. It's gonna be all week. So it was for his birthday. I had a score on three one for him, and they went three 0 Allison pulled no. a few good saves off at the end. So. He was a wee bit raging because he, yeah. he had a, I think he was getting about 240 quid back and yeah. he had it all spent in his head. And he, and he is a G. What's he called, Rossa? Rossa, hi. Yeah, he's a legend. Why did you call him Rossa? Um, Christine's uncle was called Ross, right? right. And But he was a bit a bit mad. Yeah. Um, he, he's passed away now, but he was he was a loose cannon. And um, she always liked the name Ross, but she didn't want a name to be named after Ross after, yeah. just in case just in case he, he turns out exactly <laughs> like him so it's it was, yeah Ross I went well yeah man no, I like it it's cool it is really cool my wee Emily she 
she was busting to meet you too today. Yeah. Like she seen you uh, uh Tyson Fury and all you see last yeah, week. Yeah. She was like, Wow, you know what I mean? It's funny, bro. It is cool. The the wee ones, isn't it, bro? Like yeah. what do you, how do you feel being a dad? Like you know, unbelievable. I mean it's the best it's the best job in the world. I've I've three kids and I have a wee baby just born nearly ten months ago. I Mila. She's a bitten image of no, her. She's as well. a good My kid goodness. as well. She also does a smell. She just uh, smells and sleeps. It's yeah. great I would have had ten if they were all like her, if I'm uh, being honest. Uh, um, and then Carla, then. Carla's the oldest one. She's about to turn thirteen. Um, and Same the wee boys like. about to turn nine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I met Carla. It was after I'd done the Shane Todd podcast. Yeah. And I says to Shane Todd, um, my personal trainer. And I was like, I'm giving fucking Michael Lyons a bad name. <laughs> I'm personal trainer. But I says, me and Frampton have the same personal trainer. Next thing he rang me saying, you rang him laughing or something, saying, all right, you're my personal trainer. Uh, and, then, uh, uh, uh. and then we met up and we, Carla came and brought me a pack of snowballs. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you said you liked the snow. That's right, remember? So she brought the snowballs, that's right. Yeah, so it was funny, bro. So I'm annoyed because I didn't fucking... I didn't get to the Barry McGuigan part of the book. Mm. I'm actually fuming. That's what I wanted to read. So funny enough, when I... Um, can you remember the photo in the book um, when you'd done the City Hall yeah. homecoming? Yeah. And, like, everyone was there, and um, Barry McGuigan and all was there. Well, I was doing... Uh, I was um, doing like some workshops at the time and I seen the whole home homecoming and they were like, oh, Frampton's here and oh, yeah. Frampton's here and it was packed. And I just had my like rucksack on me and I was thinking, oh, I'd fucking love to meet Frampton and I couldn't get near you. But I walked round into the city hall yeah. and there was all these press and security guards and there was loads of press and all. For some reason I thought, I'm just going to walk away from all them, yeah. stand at the stairs, stood at the stairs. Next thing, who come walking down the stairs? Barry McGuigan. And I just says to him, excuse me, Barry, can I get a photo with you? Yeah. And he looked a bit angry. Yeah. You know, because he obviously didn't want photos or nothing. Right. Like, whatever was happening, he was busy. But he just sort of, like, the way it landed, he just went right and done the photo with me. Look, right. here it is here, look. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that up for you to see. Yeah. I just met the legend Barry McGuigan, and that's when he was your manager then, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. That was all, yeah, it was all cushed in and everything was nice. But... So... Obviously changed a lot. So, I don't know about you, but I was thinking, of, do you know, I think he might owe me a bit of money. Barry? Aye. Uh, right. I'll tell you why. Might not be the only one. UTV. <laughs> UTV. Yeah. Days of the Jackal. Oh. Documentary about Carl Frampton. And he samples my... He samples oh, my well, in fairness to Barry, what was that, you? I'll be, no, 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 I'll be UTV, not, UTV. not, not Barry, aye, right, so, that's it, see Sky TV take it up with me, UTV have to sort that out there, you should have, I mean, you, you. you're entitled to a few quid, back then I didn't give a fuck, again, the thought of, um, Carl Frampton documentary and my born in Belfast, you're helping off, I was fucking over the moon, so what happened with Barry, bro, I wanted to get, I wanted to read about it so I could uh, ask you some specifics, just, but I didn't even see it, I mean, we'd, we'd, we'd go into it a lot in the book, but it's, um, the relationship literally broke down over money, and that's what happens in boxing, and, um, a lot of times it's the same old story, uh, you'll continue to hear it as well, where fighters fight with managers and promoters over money. Um, there was a another part, Barry, Barry was kind of, in my opinion, promoting and managing me as well, yes. and, and that's against the rules. There's a rule called the Muhammad Ali Act, and where you can't be a promoter and a manager of the same fighter. So. The manager's meant to fight with the promoter to get the best deal for the fighter. So if you're doing both... Then you're not getting the fighter yeah, getting so, screwed. Yeah, um, yeah I've just started to... You know, I'm waiting to talk about it there. Like 11 months for my wages for fights. Yeah, Wasn't getting the sponsor money coming back. I was When I was getting the wages, I was being told one number and then it was coming into my account and I was like, what, what's that? And then we found out during the court process that... Um, the expenses they were putting in that were coming out of my purse, which is fair enough, the expenses for teams and stuff, but they were taking the piss. Like it was, you know, women's shoe shops. Um, well, it's not a boxing expense. Yeah. Um, they were, you know, I mean, we small receipts, McDonald's receipts for a couple of quid. Yeah, he thought he was a politician. It, it, uh, man, it was, it was, it was, um, it was mental. It was mental. But we talk about it all in the book. There was, they had a, 
after my fight with Leo Santa Cruz in, in Brooklyn, um, New York, so we had, I had, I stayed out and had a ho holiday with my wife, my mom, my dad, two kids at the time, and Christine's mum. So we, we had a holiday, and the McGuigans had a holiday as well. So the fight happened, say it happened, I can't remember the exact date, say the 20th of July. For 10 days later, while the McGuigan, uh, 10 days or a week, either 10 days or a week later, I need to get that right, it was one of the two, there was expenses coming out of my purse after the fight. How can you be expensed after the fight? They were just having a holiday yeah. on on my For name. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was madness. And then you just went to court then all about went it to eventually? Court. Went to court, yeah. And then... Um, Fuck's sake, and bet, I bet you've paid a fucking fortune on them well, fucking solicitors anyway. Well, solic solicitors aren't cheap. I'm um, telling you. But, um, but there, there was a settlement, so yeah. we're not allowed to talk about figures or anything. Yeah. But what I can say is I'm extremely happy with, with the settlement. Of course. So it was settled out of court. Settled out of court. But yeah. So the reason we can talk about the, the court case and what happened so much was because the court, the court process went on for, I think there was maybe 20 odd days of a court process. Mm -hmm. And, like, anything that was mentioned in court, we can talk about. So the deal was really done at the end, you know what I mean? It was almost over. And then there was a settlement agreed towards the end. So we can talk about everything up until that point. Um, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff in the book that people won't be aware of that I can even, even talk about. Because they just see settlement and think, he can't mention it, but... I feel like I've hammered them in it. Yeah, of course. Well, I did notice that. Uh, like, obviously, that's pretty much the biggest talk yeah. about the book, isn't it? About the fallout. See, just because you were good, good friends with Barry, though. Yeah. No, just... Barry, Barry, like, Shane, his, his son, was um, the um, best man, a, a groomsman at my a wedding. Groomsman. His other yeah, brother... Oh, uh, uh, Paddy Barnes. Was Paddy the Barnes, best the best man. Yeah. His other um, brother, Jake. Jake was probably closer... To me than Shane was I, I was good friends with Jake um, like Jake's alright he, he'd have a drink and all the, the McGuigans are all very um, like a lot of them don't drink Barry Shane doesn't drink I don't think Sandra drinks I'm not sure that's the mum mm -hmm. um, all into training and, and, and all that sort of stuff but Jake was a bit more like a lad like he was he was alright so it was, I was really let down by him I thought and the, I think he he knew about a lot of stuff that was going on behind the scenes and um and and you know he was it was it was horrible. Um, and and fairness to Shane, he was my coach. Yeah. Uh, and a very very good coach. All the stuff that we talked about in the book, I don't know if he'd have been aware of every every aspect of it going on. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I mean the relationship's dead between them all now. Of course, and I can uh, I understand the the anger and the pain as well. Like you know seeing it, but um. Especially like if they were your friends. Yeah, but there isn't any any more. Like there was. Like, I mean, it was being add up by rage for a while. Yeah, hated these people, despised them, and but if doing the book, I think was like cathartic for me. It was nice. Therapy. I a bit of therapy and and just talking about it and venting and um. So I kind of just laugh at them now. You know what yeah. I mean? I just I, I almost pity them. See, it was sad because. I remember when I got the photo and all with Barry and all, and you, he was your manager and all, mm. I remember thinking, this is fucking sick. Because Barry, he was like a Catholic fella, wasn't he? Yeah. And he married a Protestant That's woman. right, yeah, yeah. And then you're a prod and you married a Catholic guy. Uh, and I was thinking, yeah. it's like the new age and they're fucking... Yeah, yeah. And no, I loved it. The, story, the whole story was good and, and it all could have been... It, it all could have been very good and it, it should have been good. You know what I mean? If, if people had have done what they were meant to do and um paid me on time mm -hmm. and not you know course. used expenses and on personal things that was coming out of my purse then it, it should have been you know what one of them fairy tale stories like you know barry yeah. as the manager and and, and then me as a new kid coming through but they've, yeah. they've ruined it and it doesn't even fucking make any sense because it's like short term thinking about how much money you can make so, off you, like uh, on honestly, the short term if, if if they had have been sensible about it and 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 thought kind of long term, then he could have been a partner, a fucking stable. I mean, he mate. could he could have been a partner, a stable <laughs> mate, but he could have. I mean, the amount of we we were massive at the time, like in terms of the, the shows that we were putting on, and it was like I was able to fill the Odyssey fighting guys who weren't very good. Yeah, 
Um, so that there was there was the amount of money that, that we all could have been making. Of course. Um, yeah, I was getting up to that part. Like, uh, So I'm halfway through on top of the world and you're smashing it at the... And the, who was the fight? Kiko? You kept on trying to fight him? Oh, uh, Kiko for a while. It took a while before we fought each other, but I eventually got it. And you said you believe maybe it was God on your side. Well, you didn't say it, but you said you felt like it was, um, it was a just, good thing that uh, you didn't fight him the first yeah, time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the, the first time I was meant to fight him, I think it would have been my 11th fight. Yeah. And I think now, looking back, I was probably a bit too green then for someone like Kiko, who's just a wee hard, like, hard, tough man, punches really hard, takes a good shot. Um so it's kind of I think it all just kind of you get a wee bit of rub of the green at the times yeah, and, yeah. and things work in your favour and a bit of luck so although I had you know I had to try hard and train hard but I always had that wee bit of luck when I needed it as well yeah tell you what bro what a, I can't lie I even said that my girlfriend oh, is he reading it because you're you're only a couple of you're a couple of months older than me born in the same year you're yeah. February aren't you in February I'm yeah. July oh right I was right. supposed to be born in July the 12th oh were you but I was 10 days uh, early flip me up. yeah the 12th of July no but it was the 2nd of July but um, same year so same era I moved to Swansea when I was 7 hmm. and I moved um, to a wee place called Bunny Mine and there was a boxing club I went into the boxing club, yeah, and it was run by a man called Mario Macnarelli. Oh, I I know Big Enzo. Like and Big uh, Enzo was there. Yeah. So he's a couple of years older than us, isn't he? Enzo's a bit older than us. I yeah. Enzo's a good fighter, very oh, very bro. good fighter. Well, I joined his gym. Yeah. We were. I I loved it. Became obsessed with it three times a week, like you said. Yeah. And I loved it, bro. And we were all done. The only thing I hated was the running. Yeah. Because I've always been. Yeah, hate the running fella. myself. But I was behind you all the way. But yeah. I was jogging. Everyone just else was running ahead. And I was thinking this is no good. Like, yeah. You know, freaked me out the runner. But I loved it, bro. I was obsessed with boxing. Yeah. My dad bought me this when I was six. Yeah. Never took it off my whole life. Yeah. Good I'm now man. 36. So I've had that 30 years. Fair play, yeah. Not not, but um, Enzo. I remember him getting his boxing glove tattoo. Yeah. He came in. He was showing all the lads. They all the did. Everyone does it. The yeah. boxing. I didn't do the boxing glove. I got some shit tattoos, but. Um, I've seen it. You got Carl on your back. <laughs> Fuck me! I forget about that one, and then because you don't, you never see it. But um, a funny story about that: me and me and my two mates, Darren and Glenn, um, run the shankle one day, and your man run the corner up, up, up from the uh, the leisure center. Yeah. Is it, what do you call your man's place? Can't remember any of them. But it's as tattoo places on the corner, and we just walked in. We're only we're 16, 15, 16, We got our tattoos. We all yeah. decided to get our first names on our back. Oh, stop! I fucking some wee girl says to me, "I was at um, <laughs> I was at a phone party in uh, Grand Canaria when I was maybe seventeen. Um, everyone taps off and all. And some wee girl, and she was she was all right looking like. And and to be honest, you know, I'm a wee midget. There's not many girls approach me. Yeah like trying to talk to me I'm normally the one that had to go chasing so she approached me and um, she says well Carl how you doing I went oh, I'm alright she went how do you know I'm Carl she went your name's on your back you dickhead uh, <laughs> and then that was it oh, that's a good that was uh, a good wee icebreaker anyway uh -huh. Valder bro um, yeah so reading the book bro I was like um, like I said then I went I was into boxing and I loved it. I was obsessed with it. We trained with Enzo and all. Yeah. He said to me, I'm going to be a champ one day. Then we moved away to Manchester and met all the lads in yeah. the street and started eating fucking loads of sweets. Got really fat smoking weed and all. Yeah, yeah. Never done it. Reading your book, bro, I got like, like sad or something. I thought, I could have fucking been a boxer. Well, Do you know when I was a kid, I used to draw me being a heavyweight champ of the world, yeah. designing my boxer and shorts. No, yeah, I didn't yeah. ever want to be a rapper. I wanted to be a boxer. Yeah. You know, that was what Flip I wanted me. to be. But like. you know what? That's the thing. Like, I mean, there's there's kids who beat me when we were kids and, yeah. and beat me pretty convincingly. And so why, what happened? Why, why am I, why did I do what I went on to do and they didn't? Yeah. And, and, all I can think of is I wanted it a bit more on them. Because yeah. there wasn't any better. I wasn't better on them at that point. Like, they had more skill. They had more natural ability on than I had. But I just I you just wanted just it more on them. Uh, yeah. You're just a maniac for it. Like, yeah, aren't you, pretty bro? much. That's what I loved about it as well. Like, the dedication was next level. Yeah. And then even when you said, because I know what you're talking about as well, them, the old school amateur 
boxing trainers yeah. were fucking hard. Oh, Nowadays, days would be getting done for no, no, years. yeah, back then, yeah, an old boy Joe Farrell who. Um, a lot of respect for Joe, obviously, but there was two coaches, Billy McKee and Joe Farrell, and and they were kind of like um, two completely different characters. Like both of them were were strict, and but Billy was Billy had like a nicer say. Joe was just old military, and he would yeah. drill you and hammer you, and the training sessions were always hard, and he'd be slapping you, and you like you wouldn't get away with it. You wouldn't get away with it anymore. Yeah. But um, Joe passed away a while ago, so it uh. was. I mean, me and him. Not that we ever fell out. I but know what you mean. I just, just never. A big I, I never. I never. I always well, felt a bit yeah. closer to Billy. You know of what I mean? Of course, obviously. I read the part in your book just triggered me. I thought, shit, I remember that same thing. They were they were weird about letting you have a drink of water. Stupid. Uh, it's just it's backward. But that's and and that's a like boxing is it spit it out spit it out so you're I mean you, people talk about being hydrated all the time and when you're training and you're sweating you need to keep drinking. But yeah, in, in our club, we had there was one there was a, a two liter container that used to be a milk container. Yeah, about um, ten years before. Uh, so it's, it's been sit, it was sitting there for a year. This bottle <laughs> yeah. and it used to get filled up every night, and everybody had to drink out of the same one and yeah. spit into a bucket. Ah, yeah. oh, stop! And used to stand over and watch and make sure you were spitting it, not drinking it. But like, first of all, it was would have been disgusting. Everybody <laughs> drinking it, and secondly, then you weren't even allowed to drink it. You had to spit the flipping thing out, and then. You know, because you're buckler, you're sweating and all. Oh, as well. sweating and all. Oh, as well. I remember it, though, because I was the same on Bunny Man Boxing Gym. Yeah. And um, we were all there, and I remember, like, parched, and then I'm saying, don't swallow it, and I had to spit it out. Was weird. Stupid. It's just weird. Stupid. But it's a funny thing, because it was very nostalgic reading it. Uh, yeah. I was there, like, you know what I mean? I don't know who you were going for more in the book. Barry McGuigan. Or Paddy Barnes. Every fucking paragraph you're this no, and that. No, I like the. I was only a wind up name. Paddy are good mates, but and, and Paddy's good for it as well. But, um, yeah, Paddy's Paddy's a good lad. Yeah, I love Paddy Bar. I met him um at the whiskey lunch. Aye. You know, but it was funny reading the book. There was a few guys that you fought that I've had on the podcast already. You fought Jamie Conlon. Fought Jamie, yeah. Um, fought Jamie a couple of times. Um, Did you fight him a couple of times? Twice, yeah. sorry. Right. Uh, Throw McKenna, you've had him oh, on. I couldn't fight believe Tyrone, it. Well, I'm walking Tyrone out. Yeah, yeah, his very next good. Fight. Yeah, I love fucking Tyrone. I couldn't believe it. And I said to Tyrone, hey, you never said you fought from. Oh, he wouldn't, would he? Because he got exactly. filled in. Exactly. Well, that's what it is. I turned <laughs> turn the page and it says, next thing I had to fight this big lanky fella. And I was just to Tyrone McKenna. I, I made sure to put the picture of that fight in because it kind of just showed you, like, what I had to overcome a lot. Like, I never fought anyone smaller on I me. Mean, yeah, they were always course. bigger on I me. Mean, and Tyrone was, I mean, he was stupid tall. Yeah. He was fighting at yeah, nine. We tall. fought at nine stone. Yeah. And he was six foot two. I know, that doesn't make you sense. You know what I mean? Because fucking Mike Tyson, the heavyweight champ in the fucking world, he was, was five, five ten. I know, I know. Sick, bro. So fucking, yep. So you, you fought all the fucking lads, like I said. You just ran through them all, didn't you? Yeah, well, a few, but I, look, I, I had my first share of the feats as well. Cool, that's what I loved um, about it. In the amateur days, you didn't, you fucking lost a good few, I lost, you? Yeah, there's, it says on Wikipedia, and, and obviously people just make up what they want on Wikipedia, but I think my record officially is 108 fights and 100 wins, but it's no, it's, it's closer to like 200 fights and 150 wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I've I've been beating my first year. Of course. Um, Here yeah. I've seen that you you were supposed to fight fucking Lomachenko. Well, I uh, in the amateurs. Yeah. So uh, a tournament in uh, Istanbul. He was lucky. Uh, I said that. <laughs> a tournament, a tournament in Istanbul uh, called the Amit Kamert tournament, and um, I fought in it the year before, um, and I got beat. I won a fight and then lost in the semi-final, so I lost my next fight. But the next year, I come out and I had four fights in four days to win it. So it's pretty hard, You're, and you have to weigh in every day. So you fight you fight once, and then you weigh in, sorry, you weigh in the morning, and then you fight in the afternoon. So you eat some food, then you fight. Yeah. And then you have to go and check your weight as soon as you get off the scale, or, or out of the fight. Out of the fight, yeah. And then... You've just had a fight and you've still another three pounds to lose. You stick a sauna suit on to get ready for the weigh-in the next day. For like it's sake. it's it's mental. It's mental. But that's that's what you had to do. But I drew in the first round. I drew a Ukrainian, and the Ukrainians had their first team out there. Um, like I think Usyk and all was out there, uh, and obviously in a heavier weight division. Mm -hmm. But 
Lomachenko was injured, so he wasn't there. Other centre number two, and I beat the number two, and then and then I beat another couple of boys. Sick, bro. Yeah. So he he was scheduled. You were obviously our number one. I was a number one in, yeah. in the, at the time in Ireland, but I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't have beat him. It would have been nice to fight him just to see like. If I could fucking hit him, even you know what I mean. Yeah, but of course, yeah, um, you weren't a courser, but yeah. I believe I, you never know, bro. No, I, I look I, honestly, he was a, I mean, an unbelievable, unbelievable fighter. Has his own unique style. I wouldn't have got close, but he, he had like I would have like hundred wins or something. I, I think he he did he have did he have one loss, one yeah. defeat, and he avenged it a couple of times. Yeah, the Russian guy. Yeah. So, yeah, he's unbelievable. Did he go pro? Lomachenko, yeah, he was. He's he's still pro now. He's, he's boxing away. He, um, has he lost yet? He he has lost. He lost his um, like his second fight or something. The guy, but he fought for a world title in a guy called Salido, who was just a bit too, like he's a much better fighter than Salido, yeah. Max, this Mexican guy. But he was just like a hard, dirty old like like yeah. wily fox. You know what I mean? But yeah. Lomachenko was a multi weight world champion, great great fighter. Still. Yeah, he's epic, bro. Yeah. Serious. Um, he's from. Ukraine as yeah, well, yeah. isn't it, bro? Yeah, all them Ukrainians are nuts, yeah, in it? The great. glitch goes and all yeah, as well. Good fighters, Serious, yeah. Bro. Usyk, so, love Usyk as well. Yeah, Usyk's funny as well. Yeah, he's a, a, what a character. Have you met, have you met Usyk? No, a few times. Oh, lovely, lovely big lad. Yeah. Lovely big lad. Can he speak good English? He, 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 um, he acts like he can't, but he can speak better than, than he lets people believe. I think he just had, it's harder for him to do interviews in English, obviously, because it's yeah. not his first language. Yeah. So he pretends he's not as good at his that he is he, like he can speak it he can speak yeah, it alright of course he plays on it but oh, it's yeah. good like Khabib done that as well you know they talk a little bit yeah, so yeah. it's a bit more menacing yeah. you know it's funny so let's talk about the the Tyson Fury fight bro listen mm. I fucking loved it seeing you um, like as the commentator for it that was special bro what was it like going to Saudi <coughs> it was unbelievable I'm um, really good I enjoyed it it was a lot more like we went out there thinking not knowing what to expect, Saudi Arabia, dry country, no drink or anything, yeah. and um, it was a lot more liberal than I thought it was going to be. Like we were, you know, people telling us cover up your tattoos, don't eat with your left hand, and all this sort of stuff, and it wasn't like that at all. Um, but it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. But the whole event, I mean, the event was unbelievable. Next like it took level. them and that that stadium at Fury fought in. So there was a. A stadium next to the main stadium. That's where all the, the undercard, were. the yeah. undercard kind of fought there, and then everyone moved into the the main arena. And then there was so a big fucking concert. Before. Concerts and all. It was mental, but it was. I mean, it was a twenty twenty thousand seater arena. Yeah. Took them ninety days to build it. 90, you wouldn't even get planning permission what over here. Fuck? Ninety days to build a twenty thousand seater arena, like built in. Um, unbelievable. Um, and then the superstars were like everyone's are. Bro, I'd never, was a... I'd never seen more celebrities at a fucking fight in my yeah, life. I know. Did you say where were you in the big photo? Oh, I think I didn't get embedded that gig, and I was raging about I that. Was raging. I, I can, I'll tell you why. I seen your so, Buddy Barnes run. Remember? Did you see him? He, uh, he put me in. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was furious because there was a there was a gala event, right? And um. For all these super Eminem and fucking all the boxers and Kanye West, Ronaldo, everyone's there. Um, but I thought it was like super, super exclusive, and we were working for the TV, so it, we're like, well, well, we're not invited. It's all the real superstars. So I was okay with that. My mate Darren Fletcher, who's a commentator, the, the football commentator and boxing commentator, and I is good friends with Rio Ferdinand. So he went as Rio's plus one, which was was okay. So when I start looking. Uh, Queensbury done like a live event at the show and, and this live thing on YouTube so I, I stuck it on I seen a guy at it called Gareth A. Davies who's just a boxing reporter I was going how the fuck's Gareth A. Davies are and I'm not and then I seen a guy <laughs> called Bran Rose there who I think Bran Rose I don't even know if he's a British champion he may, may have been going, why the fuck Bran Rose is there and, maybe, and then another guy called Tony Jeffries who, who won a bronze medal in the um in the Olympics in 2008. Obviously. So fuck. You know what I mean? He was there and yeah. I'm going, I was furious. So I said to Fletcher, every cunt's here and I'm not there. Yeah. And I was raging. And he just sent me a, a selfie back with Eminem saying, Eminem's here too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 hey, I'm not going to lie because when you said you were going over and I was like, Frampton said G and then and next thing you seen the, the, 
photo, you know, with all the fighters yeah. and they're, they're all holding the glove. I spent about 10 minutes looking at every one, trying Aye. to find you. And I was thinking, then I thought, Francis probably took the photo. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Aye. But um, fucking next level, bro. Did you meet Eminem? No, didn't meet anyone. Didn't get Did the chance. And do you know what? I'm going, there, there'll be another, Fury New Six going to happen at some time in the, in the new year. So I'll make sure. I'm at this event, and I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hustle them all. Yeah, well, I loved your fucking commentating, bro. I was very proud of you because you just fucking stuck to your guns, mm. and fucking. So I've always loved John Fury. Always loved them. My whole like, I've I've followed Tyson since like before the Klitschko days because yeah. I'm from Manchester. Yeah. Like, so I followed him and all. And I always knew about him. Loved his dad. I thought his dad was a fucking G. So did I, to be honest. Until <laughs> until that until yeah, that with yeah. you, bro. And I thought you handled it like a fucking dawn. The way he was like talking to you, and I was thinking, first of all. I don't care who your son is or anything. Mm. You're not a fucking boxing champion. Yeah. Don't be talking to a two weight world champion like it, a piece of shit. It was that just angered me. It was an opinion, really, and it wasn't even that harsh. The opinion. It was about Tommy, Tommy and Jake Paul, and to be honest, both of them are at a similar level. Jake yeah. Paul and Tommy. There's yeah. no real. Tommy beat him in the fight, but it was a reasonably close fight. Yeah. Jake Paul knocked him down and stuff. So I was asked before the fight, "Who do you think wins?" And I was like, "I don't really know. I think both novice enough." Put a gun to my head, I'd probably say Jake Paul. That was it. It wasn't Literally. even that critical or anything. Yeah. And Big John yeah, fell I out with me over it. Know, yeah. But, but uh, again, because I was the same as you, I actually said, and everyone was saying to me, Are you nuts? He's a boxer. Yeah. And I said, no, I think Jake will do Because Jake's knocked out fucking UFC champions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought he was, was going to beat him genuinely. I wasn't yeah. just saying that. I wasn't trying Obviously. to wind Tommy Fury or John Obviously Fury up. I just that. thought that and, and I got it wrong. and. I loved it when he when he said, "No, I had respect for you," and then he turned his back on you and carried on talking. But you just said, "Sweet," and you just walked off. Uh, no, he's still talking. To uh, but I, I wanted, I, I was shit myself. I came out of that looking really, really well, actually, because it doesn't look like I shit myself, but I was fucking trembling, like I was shaking. You just like, couldn't believe that he said, "Of course," and he's there just like giving that. it the obvious thing. Like, yeah. But that's what's good about it. He came across just like a big bully. Like, you're just stood there. You're allowed to say what you fucking want. Yeah. Like, you don't have to... Everyone doesn't have to agree. Yeah. But you know that's... I mean? See, this is one of the things about boxing as well. Like, for such... It's a it's a macho sport, isn't it? Like, yeah. a lot of hard, hard men do it. And there's females doing it as well. You have to be tough and resilient, but... You dare say anything that annoys him, and everyone throws the fucking toys at it. And like you said, though, of course, you're gonna. Have, it's a fucking who you're, who's gonna win out of two men. I know. So I you're know. always gonna be upset. It's one or the other. I know. I know. You know what I mean. So, um, yeah, it annoyed me that bro, but I, I, I do love the Furies, obviously. But then watching the fucking fight, I'm telling you this now. On my Instagram, I posted it up just before the fight happened, and I said, I really, really hope. Francis just shocks the world tonight. Yeah. That's what I said. I really hope because I followed Francis's career. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people, even my dad and all, was saying, "Who is this fella?" Yeah. And you know, fighting Tyson is this just some? And I said, "No, this is a fucking hero." Yeah. No, he is a hero. His whole story. You listen, listen to everything, and they they put a wee bit out on on the night about the backstory, and you know, he was digging sand yeah. uh, as a job from a six year old child, and and he's had the. He was living in a, in a mud hut pretty much and yeah. he's had to escape um, Cameroon. That's where he's from, Cameroon. Yeah, Cameroon yeah. Yeah. And then get into France and Spain and stuff for a while and he ended up back in, uh, over in the States. But it's been a hard, hard slog for him. Yeah. So um, fair, fair play to him. He's a, he's a lovely big lad too. Oh, Sound as a pound. I've... Just a big, a big. I mean, he'd, he'd rip anyone's head off, but just a big gentle giant. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you see... When he first came in the UFC, I remember him. He was just knocking out guys, and then mm. he had his um, big cane rolls, yeah. and he called himself the Predator. Yeah. And I was like, he fucking looks like a big Predator, you yeah. know, and he was sick. But I, back then, he said, when he moved to Paris originally, he was homeless and mm. on the streets. He never heard of MMA. Mm. And he said his dream was is, boxing, yeah. And he said, I'm going to be like Mike Tyson. Yeah. I'm going to be the heavyweight champ. And then someone said, have you heard of MMA? Mm. And then he got into it. Got but him, again, yeah. he was just a knockout. He's always expert. boxing, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he, he, I suppose he surprised everyone, didn't he? I didn't. I fancied Tyson strongly in the fight. I yeah. thought that, you know, he's the, he's the heavyweight champion of the world. Francis is having his first boxing match. Surely he can't win. Surely it can't even be close. Yeah. I was just kind of hoping that, I didn't want, I, I, I imagine Francis going to come out and just be swinging and look wild and novice. 
I didn't want him to look or you know be embarrassed from his, his performance, and I thought that might have been the case. He looked. Um, I thought he was brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. His nice stand up style. He was switching stunts. Um, very, very good. And very, very good. composed, wasn't he? Yeah. Even like, see when he knocked him down. Yeah. I thought he would have been. No, I know. Then, very I composed. And see what see, Tyson. Tyson was feeding him feints, fainting, and he ne he never fell he into a bite. trap. He, he never fell bite. into a trap yeah. at all. He like, didn't. That um, looked like someone had been boxing for years and years. Yeah. See. I knew, I had a feeling, I didn't think he was going to come out all reckless, I'll yeah. tell you why. Um, in the UFC, he was only known as punching, yeah. he, he couldn't grapple, and um, Stipe Miocic mm. exposed him. Yeah. He, was, uh, he was fighting for the belt the first time, and he was going to become the first African champion mm. ever, but Stipe stumped it. Stipe just took him down. Yeah. And then he was like a big turtle on yeah, his back, yeah, couldn't yeah, do nothing, yeah. and Stipe just smashed him to bits. Mm. The second fight then, I thought, it's going to be the same. Yeah. It doesn't matter what Francis does. You're fighting a, a seasoned grappler. Yeah. So even if Francis has tried, it's not going to happen. What happened? Stipe out. tried to take him down and Stipe, um, Francis blocked it. Yeah. Turned around and smashed him on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, he's a fucking grappler now. Yeah. So that's why I never underestimated Francis. I thought, this guy will rise to the occasion and yeah. he's a smart no, he fighter. Did. He really did. Bro, I couldn't believe it. And then, oh, bro, when the fucking said he lost. Like, what? Yeah. Like, I, I Look, I, I thought, a lot of people, and a lot of people beside me thought that Francis won as well. You know, the punditry team, we yeah. all thought that Francis won the fight and done enough to win it. Um, a lot of people are also saying to me, go back and watch it and just score it um, again, um, yeah. you'll you'll have it closer, or you'll have maybe Fury just winning, or maybe a draw, or something like that. Um, so I haven't had the chance to do that, but I will I will do it. But maybe maybe it was just surprised by how good Francis was, and a lot of the rounds were close. And yeah. I I was giving Francis. Some people give you know people rounds. Tyson for me was like looking like he always wanted. He never wanted to engage with Francis. Everything was like keeping him away. Like he was yeah. jabbing like that and. It was almost like just stay away. Mm -hmm. I I like to score. I don't always do it this way, but I like to score the aggressive fighter. There's someone going forward to try and make the fight. Now, if you're being aggressive and going forward and getting your head boxed off, then the other guy's winning the round. Yeah. But it, it didn't seem like that to me. So the close rounds, I was edging towards Francis, and that's why I had him. I had him a winner on the night. Yeah. See, a lot of people think because because Nagano knocked him down. You know that means he won like they yeah. don't understand no, that's yeah, not yeah. boxing yeah but that wasn't just that it wasn't like um all the other rounds were very close yeah there they was, were very yeah close. they're all close rounds and but there was a i mean even i think the show tyson showed francis a lot of respect a lot more than people thought mm -hmm. um from about round halfway through round five francis was tired like his mouth was yeah, wide yeah. open and i'm that's the point where i'm thinking right that's when fury puts a foot Stepped, down yeah but he didn't want to. Didn't want to engage with him, mm -hmm. and that's clearly, in my opinion, I think, because Francis is such a dangerous man. Yeah. Even just in case he get clipped again. Of course. Again. What do you think about Francis then? Do you think um, there were talks about him fighting Deontay next? Yeah, Wilder. Uh, I don't think he'll fight Wilder next. I think there's there's a big a big bill going to happen here in Saudi Arabia on the twenty third of December. A press conference happening tomorrow actually, um, which I'm involved in. Um, so, I don't think it'll be Francis and Wilder next. Um, actually, I'm s certain of that. But he has his place in boxing if he wants. You yeah. know what I mean? He's got this deal with a PF, uh, PFL. Yeah, yeah. Now, and he's making a lot of money. He hasn't had a fight for the PFL yet. Yeah, it's because they can't find anyone. They can't find anyone. Yeah. But he's gonna he's gonna get a fortune eventually when he does fights. Mm -hmm. And what what a what I do like about Francis, and no one else ever in combat sports has ever done this. He's negotiated. A good wage for his opponent, so you you get a minimum of two million dollars if you're fighting him. Who's ever who's ever worried about what the opponent's getting paid? That's amazing. Box? You know what I mean? Wow! Just shows you. Wow! How, Is that how what nice. done? So if you're if you're going to fight Francis Ngannou in the PFL, you're, you're guaranteed two million. Now. Wow! Fair play to. So, in my opinion, Dana White is the greatest fight promoter in history. Yeah. Just because I watched the UFC since yeah. I was six. And has seen the you know what he done with yeah. the sport like and he he revolutionized he's the, a G. I feel like he fumbled up he fucked up yeah I think Francis. so I think he did uh, and I think a lot of people will say it look you look at what Dana White no doubt no doubt about it that that what he's done with the UFC is unbelievable people like 
people get confused and call MMA UFC. That's how yeah. big it is. You know, that's yes, that's that is course. MMA yeah. like UFC. So, um, but I think like a lot of these guys are jumping over to boxing because they're they're being paid better. Of course, but the money that the UFC is making in these pay per view events. It's not. It's not trickling down to the fighters, and it should be. Mm -hmm. You know, they, these boys are keeping too much of it. Yeah, but see what. So, but what you've clocked is what, what Dana said. I think Dana's argument is this too. You see, when these fighters then like get fucking millions and millions mm. of fighters, something they, they turn into like celebrity rich yeah, guys yeah. and the silk sheets and yeah, no, I get that. And, and he likes to grit, you know. So, but when you look at it, but then the veteran fighters, yeah, they are getting a good like, you know, they're getting a hell of a lot more than all the, you know, yeah. So they've got like a there's like a fucking scheme involved. Yeah, you know no, I mean? look, I, I understand, I completely understand it, but I think that's why a lot of guys are jumping over and and yeah and and switching. Well, what happened was Francis wanted um to stay as the UFC champ. Mm. And then obviously Dana to back him and all, and he yeah. would be the current heavyweight champ fighting the lineal heavyweight, you know. Um, but Dana said for two reasons he didn't want to do it. One, he said you don't have the star power, mm. you know, like McGregor. And then, and then he said, and secondly, I don't think you're gonna yeah. do good. He's got the star power now, doesn't he? Well, I'm telling you. So they were saying he, he, apparently. The pay-per-views they were saying it didn't do that well. Did well, I, I read something about that. But then I seen Frank Warren saying it's full of shit. shit. Oh, I, 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 well. I, I expected it. I expected it to do well. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's a it was a big it was a different type of event. The undercard was actually very good as well. Yeah. No matter what you thought of the the main event, but um, I I don't believe that it didn't do well. I yeah. imagine I imagine it. Did. And I think if it didn't do as well as people were thinking, I think it's to do with like. First of all, it was like fucking eighty quid, wasn't it? Was no, it well, in in the states, in the oh, states, it, it might have been that there, but yeah. and that that's normal. Like, it, it's mental. But Mayweather and all Canelo fights are, are very big. But I think it was was it twenty twenty quid or something to buy over here. Yeah, but that's all right, of course, obviously, right. So, um, the whiskey, my bro, because yeah. that you shouted me then. Yeah, you shouted. I mean, a fucking it was uh, Michael Lyons again, our personal trainer. He yeah. messaged me and says, uh, "Our personal trainer." <laughs> <laughs> he messaged me. Just so you know, I can't even call Michael Lyons a personal trainer. He's my like strength and conditioning coach. Strength and so it's very. It would be disrespectful for me to call of him course, a personal trainer. Of course, no. So Someone uh, keep me fit. You're you know right. What I mean? Strength and conditioner coach. Yeah. Um. Do you do the ice baths and all? And no, I haven't done it. Gym? I haven't. I haven't been in yet. But I used to do a wee bit at sea swimming. All Michael can down with us as well. But. I haven't done any of it in about a year. Yeah. Um, well, Michael messaged me and says, um, Carl Frampton's looking at your number here. And I right. thought, fuck, oh shit. Right. I says, right, send him it. And, all. and then you said to come to the whiskey. Yeah. The whiskey yeah, lunch. Yeah. It was a good night, actually, wasn't it? Fucking loved it, bro. Yeah. I was a bit annoyed. I fucking, I wasn't expecting to rap. So me and Caitlin just hit the free, um, you know, the free right. cocktails. And I, was, I had about 10 <laughs> cocktails. <laughs> And then next thing it was I think Paul it was Paul who's involved Paul Lawther he's involved in it with me he he uh, he Paul's a brass neck for yeah. play to him for asking Paul like he'd he'd, uh, he'd sell snow to the Arabs like but yeah he, uh, he talked you into doing it yeah he did I got up uh, I got up there and wrapped wrapped the fucking born in Belfast got myself a bottle of whiskey you know yeah. um it was nice it's nice whiskey but it's it's like I it's a wee bit similar to like the proper twelve or something then it's get the thing? fuck it's not, not similar think? to proper twelve. <laughs> no, it's like no I it's like Irish maybe it's just Irish whiskey. I'm not I struggle with Irish whiskey. Do you know what I think you should have done? What? Even being from the bay and all it makes total sense. Listen to this is genius. Yeah. Maybe you could still do it with stable mate. Ulster Scotch whiskey. That's a, it's not a bad idea. Well, there might be something in that there, you know, because the on, scotch bro. is good. But our Irish whiskey is taking off now globally. Yeah. It's out selling scotch where it, it wasn't like that previously. So the, the market for Irish whiskey is, is massive. Where's the strongest market in the world for Irish whiskey? You'll never guess. Where do you think? Strongest market for Irish whiskey? What do you say, America? Nah. Well, he said you'll never guess. Where? No. Norway? No. India. India? No. Uh, for Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey, swear to God, yeah. Massive mm. out there. Um, but the whiskey's it's a good whiskey. We're getting a lot of good feedback on it. It's, um, you know, drink it on the rocks, drink it just straight. It's um, lovely with the apple tie. It's lo with, you know, when you're pouring it, obviously, 
you, it's good enough to drink on its own, but when you're pouring it with something, it's really, really it goes well with apple. So yeah. see, maybe it's the see Irish whiskey. I struggle to drink it on its own. Yeah, but see Scotch, I yeah. just drink it neat. See, no. there's a uh, that my old my old coach Billy McKee loved Scotch. Scotch mm -hmm. whiskey was his his whiskey. He didn't like Irish whiskey, but um, I like I like an Irish whiskey and. Um, but the feedback on this has been really, really good, yeah. and it's it's like it's strong branding. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of big. I don't even know if I can say them yet, um, but there's there's big big news coming very very soon about deals we've done with certain certain shops. Let's just say that. Yeah, right? of course, because it um, means they get in the shops. Yeah, but it's 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 it'll be it. Yeah. I think we're ahead of we're ahead of where we thought we were going to be. At. We only launched it six weeks ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you smashed it, bro. We're I, re I really, really love the design of it. Yeah. And I like the logo and all. And um, like I say, because it's the jackal as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? So uh, House of Jackal is the House of Jackal is like the umbrella brand. So we've got. Um, I, we want to get our our um our ducks in, in a row first here, and and we want to get this whiskey going. We want to get it um popular want people to know about it um we're prioritizing that at the minute but house of jackal is going to be the umbrella brand and we're hoping to go into like merchandise as well and different things mm -hmm. different sort of collaborations as well with different people and we've got a few ideas as well um but we want to give back a wee bit as well and it's not lost on us that like people have a problem with alcohol if you drink it responsibly it's okay but mm -hmm. there is some people have problems with it so we we've some initiatives and community programs that we want to do as well um and we're in the process of doing that and that and that's not going to be on a small scale either. that'll be in a bit we've already talked to people in america mm -hmm. on the east coast um pennsylvania and stuff about about doing something with kids from here and maybe trying to get a something going in america bringing them out there at a point but this is just we're only thinking about it. We are thinking about it. It's going to happen, but uh, we're just in the early process, though. I love that. I, re I remember reading in the book, it said you, um, as a wee kid, oh, you I went to America. Yeah, that's right. Done as it. A part of the Wee Cross Community yeah. Project. Yeah, what do you call it? Uh, project Children. And so, I was one of the lucky ones out of, out of the class that got picked to go. And um, it was amazing. Went and stayed with a family called the Carters, um, uh, David and Kathy Carter, in a wee place called Marshall, Texas, for six weeks. And then they brought me back the next year. Lovely, lovely people. David isn't doing too well. I still keep in touch with him. Yeah. He's not doing great at the minute. Um, and they, they email me every now and again to, to, to keep me up to date with, with how he's progressing and stuff. Uh, and I, I'm worse than the world with emails. So I always fucking... Of course. I, it takes me ages to get back and I hate it because I don't want them to think yeah, that I'm think, not thinking yeah. it. But I am. Uh, like, I have a lot of respect for these people. Just no, just good course. people. Now, I love that um, the fellow who runs Hotbox here as well. We, we were saying about getting like a group of the you know the rapper the young rappers yeah. here and flying them over there That's you I mean know, that New could York. be done you speak the right people it'll be great yeah yeah cool because there is a, it's, it's good like that you know and i like the fact that you said you know just because you're doing the whiskey as well it's good to you know pay attention to what's happening in the communities yeah. as well. no of course you know we'll, I mean? we'll always uh, look i think when you're see when you're given a platform whether you like it or not yeah you should use it to a positive effect so of course i think if you get the chance to do it you should of course. Who's your favourite rapper, then? My favourite rapper? Um, Tupac. You're a G. Just love like Tupac. Me. Love Eminem, too, like, but um, love love Tupac. Um, Eminem looked a bit fucking waxworky. I oh, oh, he's got, like he I know. A a wee, a wee bit, so he does, but... I mean, he's unbelievable, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, it's not normally the genre of music that I listen to, if I'm being honest. I, yeah. I, I like some of it. What, what's my your favorite, favorite, genre? favorite, well, kind of, I mean, middle of the road stuff. Like, my favorite group ever is Fleetwood Mac. Oh, that's my fucking favorite group, yeah. Caitlin. I, I always say that. <laughs> Love Fleetwood Mac. Favorite, fa what's your favorite Fleetwood Mac song? Oh, there's too many, bro. I mean, the first one that I loved was Dreams. You no, know well, what I mean? great tune. But I, I, my favorite Fleetwood Mac song oh, is Gypsy. Gypsy's my favorite. Gypsy. Never gets mentioned. Yeah, Gypsy's my favorite. What a tune. Oh, oh, bro. In fact, when I listen to Gypsy, I, I go back to where I was when yeah, I first yeah. heard it. Yeah. You know, and the Gypsy. Oh, oh too yeah. sick, bro. It's but weird. I hear, do you know, I love, uh, what did you call your man? Uh... His album, his rap album, you might laugh at me here because I don't know what you think about it, but um, the whole story from how he, how he does his album 
the defamation of Strickland Banks. Oh, of course, Plan B. Plan B. It's fucking um, the most underrated album, I think, Sick. going. It's, it's class. I like that, but I loved his first album. Right. His first album was called... Um, Actions speak louder than no words speak louder than actions. Right, okay. That's what it was weird album name, but um really fucking good. Yeah. Plan B, man, he was fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was sick, bro. Um there's a couple of Irish rappers as well that have you heard kneecap I've heard from of the them, falls. Yeah, yeah. So I supported them at the Fela. Yeah. Yep, Rath Coolman at the Fela. Oh, I know. Oh, no, fair play, dee. Fair play, dee. I shouted out, fuck the Pope and the Queen on the Fela, and they all clapped me. Did you? Yep. Yeah. Everyone was, uh, I was speaking to a fan the other day, he goes, that's nuts. You yeah, know, them, the knee, I've seen them kneecap boys floating about. I think they're, they're trying to be too controversial. Yeah, that's the, see, this is what I think. See, me, when I was controversial, when I done yeah. like Wee Johnny, yeah. it was a real thing that yeah. happened. I was yeah. getting death threats, and I was living in... Manchester and they're all saying I was Irish yeah. and I was thinking what the fuck am I then did you know I bet you felt that yourself like you know when you go abroad mm. you're uh, I'm guessing they don't call you Northern Irish no it's, it's just, just Irish, Irish. Oh, and you get sick of saying you get sick of saying Northern Ireland and they go what they don't really know what you're saying and stuff yeah. and even when you go I mean you go to, we always like to go to Turkey on our holiday and um, where are you from and I'd say Northern Ireland and Christine go you just say fucking Ireland like because <laughs> <laughs> you go when you say Northern Ireland the turkey's going what what yeah. he doesn't know what you're saying but yeah yeah love that bro but it is it's madness I mean the the whole co- I, I, I seen it on another podcast you said you can't get a Northern Irish passport yeah but if you could you would get yeah that. absolutely yeah because yeah, it's I, I try I'm from like I love Northern Ireland and you can call me whatever you want you know I've uh, you can call me British if you want um, call me Irish if you want, but I I'm Northern Irish. Like that's what I am. I'm from Northern well, Ireland. Well, you've represented pretty much all of them, haven't you? In boxing, yeah. Well, it's an All Ireland sport, isn't yeah. it? So I was I done that, and I was proud to represent Ireland as a boxer. But um, like I said, if if it was such a thing as a Northern Irish passport, I I would have it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I agree because I mean, irrelevant to what you think of the history and everything and all that. Uh, nowadays it is its own yeah. indistinct country you know yeah. like when you go down south there definitely is a difference oh there's a difference culture, I, I, you, the, know? you know they see us as the nordies up here of like and, and then um, it's the same with the mainland too they they, they well and that's why we're in this difficult position like because i don't think they really give a fuck about northern ireland and the mainland they and don't. a lot of people down the south as well have a lot a lot of their own issues going on with housing and yeah. homelessness and uh, you know they don't give a fuck about people up Literally. here in, in the north so we're in we're in no man's land, really. Literally, and I mean, see, because I was from Manchester, moving back here as well. Everything's, for, for being part of the UK, mm. as they say, everything's fucking different. For one, I have to get a different driving license. Yeah. I need a Northern Irish driving license. Yeah. Why can't I get a Northern Irish passport? Yeah. Now? Try spend a, a, a bank of Ulster fucking fiver in, in England somewhere as well. Oh, Flip me. I was the amount of arguments. I used to have arguments with shopkeepers all the time. Like, I know. Fucking, this is legal tender. You better take That's it. That's the word. That's it. Legal tender. <laughs> I gave that the logic the other day. I said, I owed my man a twenty quid. I give him two um, Bank of Ireland tenders. Yeah. He goes, Oh, bruv, I can't use these in England. Uh. He says, Yeah, it's legal tender. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's every Northern Ireland uh, uh, no. person's catchphrase. It's legal tender. There's fucking five banks, isn't there? Right. Like five different notes. We've got Ulster Bank, Danske, Danske uh, Bank of Ireland, yeah. Northern Bank. No, they're and gone now, Northern Bank. They oh, were. Wow. They <laughs> <laughs> I remember. So, what's next, then, bro? You've got the press conference tomorrow. I'm doing a press conference tomorrow. Big, big press conference um, about this fight on the 23rd of July. And then I have another one on Thursday, which I'm sworn to secrecy about. And I'll tell you off camera. But, um, uh, yeah, so back to back press conference going to, going to London tomorrow. Um, back home on Thursday night. Gee shit. I love the fact that you're um you're you're into the commentating and all that and you're like, you know, still a predominant voice. Yeah. No, boxing. look I, I like it and, I, and the feedback's really good actually because yeah. it just be straight. Like Because you're honest. I don't I don't you know blow smoke and if you've been good I'll praise you. If you've been shit I'll say you're shit. You if I think you've lost I'll say I think you've lost. Of but, course. I mean that's just my opinion. I'm not trying to upset anyone. I'm just I'm just trying I'm not I'm not being like I don't want to be like a Roy King who yeah, loves, loves to wind yes. people up you know what i mean i'm you're just not, i'm just saying it you're, you're, as it is you know what bro as well it's funny looking even at the photos and all as you as a wee kid you remind me a lot of my big brother yeah. adam he's only a year and a half older than me but he was like that as well like 
you know, he'll say what he is, and he's not trying to be controversial, yeah, like yeah. you said about kneecap. Yeah. I do clock it sometimes. Yeah. They're they're obsessed with trying to get in the papers, yeah, like, of course. you know, and get all the people against them, or, whereas, like, I've never been like that myself. I'll just be honest. And yeah. if it is controversial, then it is. Yeah. But you're not trying to you're do You're not trying that. to be it, yeah. You know, and it's, it's, I think that's just the, um, the realness in you, bro, you know, and mm. it does, it transcends through. Yeah. You're smashing it, bro. You got your fucking book out, your whiskey. Think about um, getting the Ulster Scots. Ulster Scots, right? There's an idea. I'm telling right. you, because it would work. Try the Irish. Yeah, you know, it's not a bad idea. Scottish, you know not a bad mean? idea. It's, have you ever tasted, before we go, you tasted the Dragon Claw whiskey? Not yet. I've seen it. I haven't tasted no, it. That's fucking special, bro. You should try it. And yeah. it's by Chris Crooks. Yeah. You know, the tattoo artist yeah, from yeah, White yeah. Dragon. Yeah. And he's got the red hand of Ulster on one side and the shamrock on the other. Oh, very and good. And it's like he, like, there's only like two barrels of it. Yeah. Like 200 bottles. It's fuck, I think it's like 140 oh. quid a bottle. Oh, Jesus. Fucking so beautiful. Ours, a, ours a bit cheaper than that, but... Oh, wow. Um, no, it's been it's going it's going well and it's it's continuing to do well. We're we're ahead of where we thought we we're going to be. Yeah, nah, I fucking love it, bro. I actually really do, and it, it is a nice um like I don't like drinking Irish whiskey straight, but with the apple tizer, fuck yeah. sake, I could drink a whole bottle of it. Yeah, it's it nice. Is, it's nice with apple. Yeah, really is good, my bro. Um, big shout out to all my sponsors. Big shout out to uh, DJ K. DJ K, but DJ K treasures on here. Yeah, and yeah. I'm the DJ K treasures too. Yeah, man, he's a G. Um, Belfast clothing brand. He's an absolute legend. Um, big shout out to Violent Gentleman as well, doing the Born in Belfast t-shirts. Big Buzz Lightyear, the legend. Weedy Wonka as well and Hotbox Studios. That's everyone. Fucking smashed it, bro. Lovely. Thank you so Thanks much for coming man. on. Thank you. No much love, everybody. God bless. What's happening? This is John Sue.